Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question path sum 3. Alright, so in this question we're given a binary tree in which each node contains an integer value. So our task is to find the number of paths that sum to a given value. So we're given this value called sum and we need to find the number of paths which give us that value when we add those integers together. So this is a really important point. The path does not need to start or end at the uh, root or a leaf, but it must go downwards, traveling only from parent nodes to children nodes. Okay, so you can only traverse from up to down, right? And uh, also it does not need to start at the root and it does not need to end at any of the leaves. So what that means is if our answer exists from the between, so let's say in this case, the sum has to equal to eight. So one of our answers is five and three, and that's a valid path because five plus three equals to eight. So now let's just take a quick look at uh, how we can solve this question. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a quick tree um, and uh, we'll just work off of that. So the R over here is gonna start to stand for root. Okay. So let's just consider this as our tree. I'm not going to be using any integers. I uh, just want to keep it really simple. So this over here are, like I said earlier, this is our root. And what we're going to do is we're going to maintain two variables. One is going to be called the current sum. So this is going to be the sum starting from the root all the way to whatever node we are at. Let's say we are at node C. So it's going to be the cumulative sum from the root over here all the way to C. So that's going to be our current sum. And our previous sum is going to be the value from our root to the node we are on, but the one previous of it. So if we're trying to find the current sum of R to C, the previous sum is going to be from R to B. So that's pretty simple. So those are two variables we're going to be keeping track of. So we're going to be storing it in some sort of data structure. And for this, since we're using Python, we can just use a dictionary. So I'm going to be storing all of these in a dictionary. And so how is our dictionary going to start off? So in the beginning, without adding anything, we're going to have a sum of zero. So that is going to be our key. And the value is going to be its frequency. So it's going to have a frequency of one. Pretty simple. Okay, so now we're going to go to our root. So we're going to add r plus zero, and that is going to have a frequency of one. Okay, so now we took care of our root over here. So now we're going to go to the next node, which is a. So r plus zero is just r, so I'm just going to, uh, so I'm just going to ignore the zero. So over here we have r plus a, right? So that's the sum, and the frequency is one. Uh, and we're just going to consider for the sake of this, all of these nodes have different integer values. Okay, so we have B and for B, it's going to be R plus A plus B and it has a frequency of one. So let me just fill out the rest of it real quick. Okay, so we've accounted for all of our nodes and these are going to be all the current sum values. But what is the point of having this? And to understand that, let's just take a look at a quick example. So let's just say, in this question, the sum. So the sum is the value that we're looking for. And in this case, the value that we're looking for is going to be C plus D. If something is equal to C plus D, that's the value. So let's just take a look at our tree. And we know for a fact that we have C plus D over here. So this is a valid path. C plus D, that gives us the sum that we're looking for, which is C plus D. Perfect. But the truth is, so for our dictionary, we're only considering the cumulative value starting from the root. How about stuff like C plus D? We did not even account for it. So how can we take care of such a thing? And the answer to that is pretty simple. So let's just take a quick look at it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so C plus D is equal to our sum. And we know that, right? C plus D has the value of the sum that we're looking for, which in this case is C plus D, obviously, right? So what is our current sum going to be? So in this case, we went all the way to D. So our current sum starts at the root and it's going to end up all the way up to D. So we're going to draw kind of like a box just to represent that. So this over here is our current sum. Okay, 
So root, all, root plus a plus b plus c plus d is our current sum, and we've already accounted for it in our dictionary, and our sum is c plus d. Okay, now the question is, how do we know or account for the fact that c plus d exists? And all we need to do is, if you look at this, you can make it into a simple uh, mathematical expression, you could say. So, so over here, the current sum is the whole thing, so I'm just going to call it cs. And the sum is a part of our current sum. So I'm just going to do cs is going to be equal to our sum plus another value. So some blank value over here. And we need to find what this blank value is. I'm just going to call this x, right? So let's just rearrange our equation. So let's call this x. So this whole thing is called x, okay? So x is going to be equal to our current sum minus our sum. So what is that? So let's just solve this equation super quickly. So r plus a plus b plus c plus d. Sorry, I forgot to add the c here. Okay, so we have this and we're going to subtract it with our sum, which is c plus d. So when you subtract it, the c's get cancelled out, the d's get cancelled out, and what we're left with is r plus a plus b. So this is what we're left out with. And if you look to our x value, this is what our x value is, r plus a plus b. But again, how do we know that it's one of our paths? And the answer to that is super simple. So we went through each and every one of our nodes and we added that to our dictionary. And if we had this value r plus a plus b plus d, then it is going to be in our dictionary. So now let's go to our dictionary and let's look for this value. And right over here, you can see that it exists. So the value r plus a plus b has a frequency of 1. So we're going to add the value to 1. So r plus a plus, so our count, so count is going to be our final answer, which we're going to return, starts off at 0. And each time we find something which has a path which equals to that of the sum, we're going to add whatever frequency this is. So in this case, the frequency is 1. So we're going to do count plus 1. So our count value is going to equal to 1 for this question. And there, might, there are a few cases where our frequency is not going to be 1 since they're integer values and you can have the same sum repeated a few times. So this is how we're going to solve our question and let's take a look at how we can do it using code. All right, so we're going to start off by initializing a few variables. So we're going to have our count, which is going to be the answer that we return. So in the, it's going to start off with the value of zero. Uh, then we're going to have the dictionary, and I'm going to call it frequency. And it's going to start off with the value of zero, which has a frequency of one. And now we're going to create a function called DFS, which is going to be for the depth for a search. It's going to be our helper function in this case. and we're going to give it the value of the node that we want to, is going to be our root. And we're also going to give it the value of the previous sum. So in the beginning, the previous sum is going to be nothing else but zero. Okay, so now let's actually create our DFS function. So I'm going to make it inside of a function. If you don't like doing that, you could do it outside of the function. Okay, so we're going to first start off by doing a base case. So if this happens, we're going to end our recursion and we're not going to make any more recursive calls. So if not root, then in that case, we're just going to return and stop the function. Okay, so over here, we're going to initialize our current sum. So our current sum is going to be equal to our previous sum plus our uh, the value of the node that we're on. So it's going to be root.val. And I forgot to add those arguments. So the two arguments we'll be taking is the root, and we're going to take the previous sum. So I'm just going to call it ps. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to make that variable that we were I was talking about earlier. I'll call it x. And this is going to be our current sum minus our sum. And we get the sum from the question over here. Okay, normally you wouldn't call a variable sum since it's a function in Python as well. But anyway, so in this case, it's called sum. Okay, so over here we're gonna have uh, three statements. So the first one is gonna, we're first gonna check if x is in frequency. And if it is in frequency, so this is in the case that it is in frequency, then we're gonna add whatever that frequency is to our count. So we're gonna add it to our count and we're gonna do frequency, and go to that value of x. Okay, so 
Uh, now we're going to have an other condition, and this is going to be the case if our current sum is in frequency. So if that's the case, we're just going to add a value of 1 to increase its frequency by 1. So frequency of our current sum is going to increase by 1. And else, if our current if our free current sum is not in our frequency, then in that case, what we're going to do, we're going to add it as a key, and we're going to give it a value of one. So frequency of our current sum, and we're going to give it a value of one. And now we're going to make uh, two recursive calls. So first, we're going to call for everything in the left. So we're going to call our DFS function. We're going to do root dot left, and we're going to give it oh sorry dot left. And we're going to give it, so the pre, we need to give it the previous sum. So the previous sum for the next node is going to be the current current sum. Okay, so we're doing uh, the same thing, but now for everything on the right. So root dot right, and we're going to give it the current sum. So over here, what's going to happen is, so we reach the ending once we're done with a certain branch. And once we, once we are done with a certain branch, what we're going to do over here is, we're going to, its current sum is not going to matter anymore since we're done with that branch. So in this case, we're going to decrease its frequency by one. So we're going to go to the frequency of the current sum. And we're going to decrease it by one. Okay, and that should be it. So after this, we're just going to return the count again. So return self.count. Okay, and let's submit this and let's see what happens. Okay, and as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have any questions or if you have any better solution to solve this. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you. Oh, and also don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.